chiropractors are so deeply ingrained in, in the philosophy of chiropractic, which we're supposed to make every single decision that we make off. Very few of us. So I actually want to go and show you how nutrition and toxicity and everything that Preet talked about, how that ties directly into the 33 principles of chiropractic. I won't go over all of them, and I'm not going to sit here and read them to you, but I want to go over a few of them with you. Because the reality is, these people right here are subluxated, and if they weren't subluxated, they, if they weren't subluxated, they wouldn't be making decisions to destroy our lives. That's the reality, and I'm going to show you how, through the principle of chiropractic and through teaching this to people, that these people, if we get our, our hands on them, and we get our words into their spirit so they can understand it and start living it, that these decisions would be vastly different right here. Right? So what is the major premise of chiropractic? Come on. Help me out. Major premise. There's a universal intelligence. It all matter. Don't, don't all go say it at the same time. <laughs> Does anybody... Who does not know... I'm not going to ask you any questions or ask you to speak, so relax. That was last night. Right? So who does not know the major premise of chiropractic? Anybody not know it? Okay, that's, this, this is the equivalent of pre-asking us... So which one, does anybody here eat conventional berries? And everybody goes, oh, no, not that. I don't know. <laughs> I've never touched a conventional berry in my life. And I never would ever even think of touching a conventional berry in my life. I've got one person raises their hand. Who does not know the major premise of Cap Rider? A couple of people. OK? Well, what is it? You know it? No, I don't. You don't know it. So, see, here's what I'm saying is that there's, and, and it's the majority of chiropractors, not just you. Majority of chiropractors don't even know what our profession is founded upon. The major premise is that there is a universal intelligence in all matter, and that intelligence gives to it all its properties in actions, thus maintaining that matter in existence. You don't have to write it down. I was going to ask him to. Yeah, he can write it down. That there's a universal intelligence that runs and governs all the matter in, in the world. All the matter, whether it's a chair, whether it's our bodies, that there's a universal intelligence within the world. The reality is that we're in a vitalistic paradigm, and all the vitalistic paradigm says is that all the physical world that we can touch and see and hear, and everything that's physical, is run and operated by the invisible. There's an invisible force or power that actually runs everything that's physical in this planet. And that's hence the interconnectedness that Creek was talking about. The interconnectedness of us making decisions on what we purchase and how it affects our health and the ozone and the waters and the streams and everything like that and our internal environment. So there's a universal intelligence in man. That universal intelligence is called what? It's called innate intelligence. Innate is in living tissue. In man, there's that universal intelligence within man is called universal innate intelligence. The amount of intelligence in matter, I'm going to read this. The amount of intelligence in matter is always 100% and is always proportional to its requirements. What does that mean? Oh, tell me what that means. The amount of intelligence in matter is always 100% and is always proportional to its requirements. So if I have a cell, the innate intelligence knows exactly what that cell needs and gives to it everything that that cell needs in exact requirements at 100%. You see what I mean? So innate intelligence is 100%. The chiropractic meaning of life is that the expression of this innate intelligence through matter, that is the chiropractic meaning of life. So as we can express innate intelligence, which is universal in man, as we express this intelligence, through our matter, that is the meaning of life. So as we give an adjustment, what we're saying is, if I give Gil an adjustment and I remove that interference between his innate intelligence, paying capabilities and abilities to run and govern his body, I'm allowing Gil to live life and express life more abundantly. Does that make sense to you guys? This is the meaning, this is the reason that we adjust people. The character of innate forces, the, the, the forces the body's innate intelligence creates are never intended to injure or destroy the living thing in which they work. Listen to this. Write this down. The character of innate forces. The forces the body's innate intelligence creates are never intended, never intended to injure or destroy the living thing in which they work. That means innate does not do any harm. It only does good. 
You guys with me so far? Okay, now watch this. You guys may have seen this, you may not have. Tissue cell. We got a brain cell, we got a tissue cell right here. So now I'm eating foods that pre tells us not to eat. So we're at McDonald's, we're having all those chemicals. Uh, it's coursing through our bloodstream. It's causing inflammation at the cellular level in the arteries. Okay, inflammation at the cellular level in the arteries. Now what happens is the tissue sends signals through the nerve system. It detects the chemicals first. The nerve system detects the chemicals in the tissue. The tissue says, wait a minute, I'm, there's inflammatory changes happening at this level in my arteries. The brain receives that information. Innate says, I know exactly what to do because is innate ever going to injure a tissue? No, because the character of forces of innate is always good. You see what I'm saying? And so what is the brain going to do to this tissue down here? What's it going to send? It's going to send healing stuff like cholesterol. Right? So it will send cholesterol down, for example, to the arteries to help heal the inflammatory changes within that tissue. Now, the medical mindset or that, uh, that, that, uh, that, that mechanistic paradigm will look and take a blood test of somebody in this area right here and they will look at our blood and say, well, you're not within the normal limits of our regular cholesterol levels and so what are we going to do educatedly? <laughs> Our education says that we've got to reduce our cholesterol, reduce our cholesterol in order to get us normal again. But wait a minute, why is there high cholesterol in the first place? Because innate knows exactly what the body needs at every single second of every single moment in every single cell, the 70 trillion plus cells in your entire body, innate knows exactly, exactly, exactly what it needs. And so it says, I need to send cholesterol here. But, educatedly, we say, oh, no, 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 we need to reduce the cholesterol because you're not in the normal realm here. You're not in the normal homeostatic balance, and so we're going to bring this down. And bringing this down is going to decrease your chance of heart attacks and heart disease and strokes. That's what they say. Correct? Now, when we do bring it down, what does the research actually show? Pardon me? It doesn't work. Not only does it not, 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 not only does it not work, it actually increases your chance of heart attacks and strokes. Why would it increase your chance of heart attacks and strokes? Pardon me? Pardon me? Because we're never getting to the cause of the problem. We're never getting to the cause of the problem right here. And so what happens is we're gonna take a Lipitor, a Zocor, a Mevacor, whatever it is, and it's gonna reduce the cholesterol, and now guess what the tissue sends back? Hey, no problems here. No problems here, because chemically we've altered the signal that the nerve system is going to send back to the brain, and so now the brain stops sending the cholesterol, and your cholesterol will come down. Your cholesterol will come down, and it increases your chance of heart attacks and stroke, because we never get to the cause of the problem. Never get to the cause of the problem. Only treating effects. Every cause has an effect. Every effect has a cause. That's one of the principles of chiropractic. What number is it? I don't know, 27. Just a guess. Right? We only treat the effects right here. You see what I'm saying? So now what we've found as well is when you have lower cholesterol, your chances of cancer increase. Anybody hear that before? When, when you take cholesterol-lowering medications and it, low, and it works to lower your cholesterol, your chances of, your, your chances of cancer increase. And so they say, well, wait a minute, this is just a temporal relationship. This is not positive. And so we're going to research that to disprove the fact that some people are saying, just accidentally, if the cholesterol goes low, your cancer rates go low. And so they did research it, and what they found is that, no, no, it's actually true, and you can go and find the research that, that, that low cholesterol has an increased chance of cancer with low cholesterol. And then the researchers were still not satisfied with that, especially the pharmaceutical industries. And so they said, I know what we're going to do. We're going to take LDL cholesterol. Is that the good, bad, good one or the bad one? It's the so-called bad cholesterol. Your liver does not produce bad stuff. There's no such thing as bad cholesterol. There is a purpose for that because any is always good or bad. It's always good. So it produces the LDL cholesterol. So listen to this. 
So we're going to take LDL cholesterol, we're going to put it in a petri dish, and we're going to have cancer cells in there, and we're going to have normal healthy cells in there, and we're going to see what happens. And what happened in that petri dish? All the cancer cells died in that petri dish. So what happened to the normal healthy cells in that area? What happened to the normal healthy cells? Come on, chiropractors, what do you think? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. They were totally fine. And they were replicating and doing the things that they normally needed to do to stay healthy and maintain life. But the idea is LDL cholesterol actually killed cancer cells. And so when you look at the safety pin cycle and look at the major premise of chiropractic, does that make sense or does it not make sense? It has always made sense to chiropractors if you understand the philosophy because any will never destroy any tissues. It's only good. You see what I'm saying? The only thing that will interfere with it is what here? Subluxation. And what forms of subluxation did, did D.D. Palmer say there were? Trauma, toxins, and what? Auto-suggestion, which is also known as thoughts. And what exactly did Creed, Creed go over? He didn't go over trauma yet, but he was. Did he go over thoughts? Did he go over toxins? Via what? Nutrition, chemicals, lack of oxygen, which is exercise. So what does this equal right here? Five essentials. That is why it is absolutely critical for your patients to understand the chiropractic paradigm. The, in, the intelligence within the body that is always good, that always governs, and always heals it. There's always a proportionate amount of intelligence in every single piece of matter and every cell tissue and organ in your entire body. And, and if we remove the interference, is this person going to be healthy or is this person going to be sick? Because as long as you're subluxated here and it causes too much signal or too little signal, the tissue's not going to perform well and the tissue performs sends aberrant signals to the brain, and this causes disease process every time. And when you interfere with the communication between the brain cell and the tissue cell, whether it be through nutrition, whether it be, whether it be through chemical drugs like Zocor, Lipitor, <laughs> and Mevacor, it's never gonna work. That's why people who take low-dose aspirin, and they're told, take low-dose aspirin, it'll thin your blood to prevent your chance of heart attacks and strokes again. What did they find in May 2011? 43% increase of heart attacks and strokes in people who take uh, aspirin and NSAIDs because of this, because it completely goes against the innate and the intelligence within the body. And once we get this to our patients, and they understand that our bodies are healthy and healing and able to heal from any disease, because the body either heals or it doesn't. The body either needs help or it doesn't. And what we're suggesting is chiropractors, and we know to be true in medical literature, Philosophically and practically every single day, you will see that as long as you remove the interference, the body can heal. Who's ever adjusted, as we were talking about last night, who's ever adjusted a child post-vaccination? One day, two day post-vaccination. Was their spine better or was it worse than the day before? Come on, is there ever a time where you feel their spine, adjustment, patient goes, gets a, a, a stinking vaccine, fills their bodies up full of toxins, and they come back, is there ever a time, if you pay attention, that their spine is better? They're, they're always more subluxing. Why is that? Because they filled themselves with toxins. Yet, yet, the same article Colin reads this morning about everybody in pain, one out of five people, and the next four years will be one out of three people. They're talking about the brightest minds in the world here. And the brightest minds in the world say, pain researchers, doctors, and patient groups across Canada want a national pain strategy that would officially recognize chronic pain as a disease in its own right, not merely a symptom of something else. Why would they want to, 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 to be able to diagnose chronic pain as a disease? Pardon me? Get more, more than that, more than that. Take more drugs, obviously. And they recommend opioid drugs. So let's give them opium, and that's what's gonna fix it, right? So, so opioids are great, let's just give them opium. Right? So why else? Why, why else would they only recommend that they would cause it a disease, that would, they would call chronic pain a disease and, and not anything else? Because they, they, they never want to look for the cause. Medicine will never, ever put a dime in looking for the cause. Same reason that he showed us this right here. Because they don't give a stinking crap about you or your patients or about anything else. And I'm not saying it's the doctor, I'm saying it's the pharmaceutical companies who run the stuff. They don't give a crap about it. The only thing they care about is making money. 
And so when your patients understand this, they will make better decisions for their health. They will be able to go to the grocery store, like Preet said, read ingredients and say, no, I don't want all these chemicals because I know, and the reasoning is, is I know this interferes with innate. It interferes with my body to heal and function properly. I know I should get adjusted, and I will get adjusted for the rest of my life, not because my chiropractor tells me, not because he makes me sign a plan that lasts a year, not because he makes me do all these things, because I know it's right for me, because I don't want to interfere with the innate intelligence that flows through my body from the brain above down, inside up. That is the principle. We don't teach nutrition to make you lose weight and, and reverse diabetes and get rid of your inflammation through for, for fibromyalgia. We don't teach toxicity so you can get reverse Alzheimer's and, and all these all these chronic neurodegenerative diseases. We teach it because it's interfering with innate and that is the meaning of life. The expression of life from your body is why we're here. You see what I'm saying? And it can't happen without removing subluxation and the number one subluxation in, in society, which is right up here. Right up here. But when you teach that to them, that's what I'm saying. When you teach it to them, I go over, last talk we did, I, I had a, a screen up here and I had four different, of the 33 principles, I had four different principles. Because I said, I want your minds, not your spines. And I can tell you that when you teach them the principle first, and you don't skirt around it and hide around it, when you teach it black and white, patients will gravitate towards you. And people who didn't bring their kids in will say, I don't know why I was doing it. I was being dumb. Now I understand. I'm bringing my kids in. I'm bringing my family. And they will become warrior patients only if they understand, though. Only if they understand. So you get it in your minds first. Get it in your minds first, whether you're a CA, a doctor, it doesn't matter who you are, and teach it to your patients, and I'm telling you, all else will follow, because this is the biggest idea I know, and it works every single time, right? So let's bring up Dr. Dan Yachter to show us, all the way from Lake Mary, Florida, who sees 2,500 patients a week, who uh, will show us how to infuse the principle of chiropractic in our day-to-day -day activities, in our daily lives. So ladies and gentlemen, give it up.